Welcome to Skill Builder. I'm Robin Clevett. Now you may have seen our door hanging video and I've been using these Rowena doors from XL Joinery and they're quite unusual. You can see they've got no styles and rails. They're a series of veneered panels which form these interesting squares which really suit the style of the building that we're using. So I've got all the handles and latches fitted pretty much everywhere now. They're pre-finished doors everywhere apart from here that are going to be painted. Now, because they're pre-finished and they're walnut and they're dark, they don't take a pencil mark very easily and I don't like seeing pencil marks on any kind of joinery. And so when you're fitting a lock, a latch, a handle, you have to mark the door. I just make a series of simple jigs. So this is the first jig and all this does is slots over the edge of the door and it's relative to this panel and the handle is in the center of this panel. In the end of this, I have a series of holes. One is the center hole. The other ones are for the mortise and then the outside holes are for the face plate to recess in. The device I'm using to put these latches in is by a guy called Peter Sauber, which you attach to electric drill to actually route out the mortise and the face plates and you just finish out the corners, in my case with a corner chisel. Because I had a lot of doors to do and a lot of latches to do, it was worth me making up this simple device. Another very simple device for piloting the handles because the handles have the square section that goes through the middle and then it also has screws which attach all the way through the latch to the other side and so that would mean putting a square line round, measuring back and marking them. This eliminates the need for that, it's much much quicker. All I had to do is two bits of off cut of skirting in my case, fix them together, I slotted my latch in, I piloted through and now that's exactly the same everywhere. This is a pair of doors so I'm going to have a latch here and a striker plate on the other door it's going to be held by a slide bolt at the top, but we're also going to be putting a pair of handles on this door as well, which are for show. The first thing I'm going to do is offer the door open, hold it in position. I bought this on about, I don't know, three or four weeks ago before I started this job. Three different size cutters. So the cutter that we use What's nice about this, normally for a latch, you drill a 25 millimeter hole for the latch because they aren't circular, but their tallest dimension means it fits in the 25. But what I don't like about that is you leave a very thin area either side of this. With this jig, I can actually do the right size mortise so the door remains a bit stronger and there's a bit more meat for fixing handles in and that sort of stuff. So say normally you'd use a 25 mil hole, which will mean it's baggy on the edges. Whereas with the Sauber, I can actually use the right size. The bit bolts into the back of here. And then we slot this through there. The clamps have got a nice rubber protective pads on. And I put that to my first pilot hole, which is the mortise I'm doing now. Tighten the bottom one up. I slide the top one down until I line up with the top of the mortise there. And the size of the mortise, we allow roughly five millimeters on either side of the latch. So on my piloting device here, You've got your centre hole and then 5mm above and 5mm down. That's what I'm lining up this first cutter with. They recommend using a drill with an RPM of 3000. And that's because these cutters are designed for quite a high speed. Now, believe it or not, I did not have a drill that did anywhere near 3000 RPM. For example, this combi drill, which is very sort of typical of what we're using nowadays, plenty power enough, powerful enough, but it doesn't spin fast enough. And I did try it, but it really wasn't suitable. So I had to go out and buy a corded drill. So I just went to tool station and I picked up a drill which does 3000 RPM. So this is a literally 
like a handyman tool, but it works perfectly. It's nice and light, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. So to set this up, to do the depth of the mortise, you press a cutter against the edge of the door. You put your latch and face plate on, and you hold it here. And with this step stop, you slot that over, and you set that to the back of the latch. Give it a couple of mil. That gets tightened up with this little hex key. Now that is going to enable the desk device to drill the depth you need it. Okay. We'll just check that. That's perfect. So you just attach your drill on the end. Now, these cutters are designed to go up and down as they cut. So you don't want to drive it in hard like that. They do do a plunging one, but these are more like a router bit. You hold on to this device, you use the drill full speed, and you gently move the drill up and down. Gets a bit of dust, we'll soon hoover that up and we'll go for it. That's it. You can see what's really nice about that is it's the exact size for the latch. So it's not too big. Now in this case, I'll also use this on the slave door. This is relative to this panel, which is the cent where the center is. This hole and this hole. And that's my guide. Line it up with the bottom hole and we clamp the bottom off. And then we do the same at the top. If you've got a lot of repeats to do, it's got this handy little clip here which you get with a pair of pliers or really strong fingers. You can slot that down. So when I did the rest of the doors, I went round and did all of these first, these holes, and then we changed it for the face plates. So this is the depth of we need to be. I'll give it some of that. Is that a keep? That's, this is the keep. We don't use these black ones. We just do a make, we make a nice neat keep in the timber. Have a perfect hole. So we've got the face plate cutter, clamp them off. And we're gonna set the depth stop just to suit the latch end and the face plate. and the striker plate ready to go in. All we need to do is clean, clean that out with a corner chisel. Got your little Japanese hammer there. Mm. Be so careful with these doors because they're oak. Oak is quite hard. If you went in there with the chisel and you hit it without doing this corner chisel, you might split that bit straight out. So, just a matter of just taking it nice and steady. Nice and gentle. And we'll just give that a little try and see if we just need to tidy it up at all. But it looks absolutely spot on to me. Yeah, that looks absolutely spot on there. A lot of the modern doors have the same construction all round with a solid core. But the core is actually chipboard, and although it will take a screw, um, you know, there's a lot of leverage on these handles, they can tend to move. So what they supply is a ferrule, which is there, and you've got a couple of screws which go through both sides of the handle. Are they screws or bolts? They're, they're bolts. Yeah. They're about a four millimeter bolt, which goes into this ferrule. So that means that you need a hole for the center, and you need a hole for them, and they've got to be pretty accurate. That slots into there. This keeps it nice and square. That's flat against the door. So I'm gonna pilot this side. Pilot this out. Spin it round. The same on that side. And then you can see that the pilot
just keep out of the way of you or just to do it. It's a bit unforgiving. Come this side, Rog. So then we can slot the handles and latch in. on and we put through the long screw and the beauty of using that little jig is it's perfect every time and anyone who's done lots of these handles knows that if you drill the spindle hole then put the handle on and try and pilot this everything gets in the way and it's just not very accurate so it's worth spending half an hour especially if you're going to do a lot of these you can keep that jig you can go in the van go in a box of jigs write what it's for so what i like to do is just tweak that up so it's there, tight-ish, on this one. And a lot of people, when they use the ferrules, don't use the screws, but what I like to do is use the screw to keep it nice and true. And I'm just gonna put one in the bottom with a bias towards that side of the hole. It's a matter of just pressing and twisting. You're going through the veneer, and just catching that bit of core. Give that a little tweak. Don't over tighten these because they actually pull that into the veneer and can crease the veneer. You don't want to do that. Then there's a grub screw either side of the handle which stops the spindle from moving if someone slams the door and if they do that and they're on the other side and the door slams and they lose the spindle they're locked in. That's that. Then we can just put these plates back on. Ideal for decorating, because these can come off for decorating. When you're screwing these on, it's easy to cross thread them. So go real gentle and they'll spin on. So the handles I'm using came as part of a set from XL Joinery. So they productized it all into a nice, neat set. You've got your handle, your latch, and your hinges, a pair and a half in this case. They also do a bathroom door lock, which is a full mortise lock with a separate snib underneath. So um, it's nice that you can get everything in one set. So what I've done for my linings is different in this case because I can fit the Sauber jig on here, but the Sauber jig won't go on the lining. So the lining you would still do your keep with a chisel and a marking gauge maybe. But what I did as I had a lot to do was I made a simple template here, which is works on the same principles as the hinge jig so I'm using a 12 millimeter cutter and a 16 mil guide bush in my, the palm router. And this little template is just enough to relieve that. So I could, I could fix that on the side of the door and use it, but because I can use the Sauber, I can just plow up and down with the Sauber, the same as I did the faceplate there, and um, finish it off with a chisel. Why won't the Sauber fit on the lining? The Sauber is designed to fit centrally in a maximum, I mean you can see how long that thread is, so you can probably get it on something 90, 100 mil wide. So it self-centers? It self-centers. You can get an offset device, for example if you're using a thick door but the lock is off-center because of a rebate or something like that, mm -hmm. then you can get a different device for that. But generally speaking, this won't do the keeps in the lining. If you put a packer on one side, yeah. would that not centralise it? Well, it doesn't open wide enough, unfortunately. Got it. Because these okay. threads are restri restricted. Okay, so, fine. Okay. Um, but, you know, it doesn't take long to make a little... Oh, no, no. Just interested to know what the limitation was. With yeah. Um, I quite often make little jigs to make my life easier. So I'm just going to set this up now. There we go. Clamp that off. Pull down that. All that set up for two seconds. <laughs> like six. Yeah. One and a half. <laughs> two pumps and a squirt. Can use a trend jig for these but the doors need to be flat. And um, I'm a lover of swinging my doors and leaving them swinging, getting the locks on. I don't want to swing them, take them off again. 
and route them in. But it's pretty good, I've seen the trend one. And it's pretty good. It's probably um, easier. If it's softwood, you can quite easily just put a block and tap it and it will just bend its way in. But with hardwood, oak, walnut, etc., it's always best to give it a little um, countersink. So I find these really handy because they've got such a tiny pilot bit in them, but a nice countersink. That's how it should sound. Oh, it's just too nice. That's it. It's the last one. That's the last one. It's oh. been excellent. <laughs> now, I must to say, I, as I said at the beginning of this, was um, I looked and looked and looked at doors. This is a pretty unique build. It's my house. It's going to be, you know, it's a carpenter's house. It's got to be something which is different. And it was, um, I looked at loads of manufacturers, but I saw these and I thought, oh my God, they're so different. And um, I've really fallen in love with them, actually. Do you think it's a bit of a shame to paint them or not? These ones, because this is the laundry, I think that um, it would just, just be a bit nicer, really. And I think there's a lot of joinery in here, so we'll have these the same colour as the joinery. OK. So the doors on the cabinets... Got it. ...are the same as the doors on here. Mm. And there was talk that we may even paint the walls, the doors, the skirtings, the architecture, so it's very uniform. Oh, right. Really? Yeah, I've seen it yeah. before. It looks really nice. I like the colour of your walls. So it's a nice colour. Oh, that's... Um, I forget what it's called now. Some stupid name. Why can't paint be called normal things like yellow, orange, brown? It's going to be it's chocolate, great. mocha. It's um, got a bit elephant's breath. Elephant's breath, whatever colour that is. <laughs> it's got to be grey, isn't it? Yeah, dovetail. <laughs> Dove right. cop. I've got one question I need to ask. Yes, sir. Before we go our separate ways, as yeah. it were. Um, that jig you made up for yeah. placing the, the, the MDF one that you made up. This one? No, the, the one that off for the side for putting yeah. the, the for... handle. That's yeah. it. That's the one. Now, th the success of that jig depends upon getting those holes dead square through does. the MDF, doesn't it? It does. So if they were slightly on the wonk, yeah. it would it'd be game over because you need them to go through yeah. nicely, don't you, like so they say. That's a really good point. And so if anyone's going to attempt to make a jig like this, um, you want to make sure, if you don't use a pillar drill, I never used a pillar drill. Pillar drills for workshops. I'm not a workshop, I'm a journeyman. I'm out in the field. So you push the latch in against there tight. That's the edge of the door. And then with a pilot bit, I use a centering bit like this which fitted nicely through the latch, and that kept it fairly straight. Now, you might say, well, the latch might rock up and down. It does. A little shim underneath there to keep it nice and parallel. When we go back the right way, it's going to be dead central. If we set it out on this side and we drill through, what you're saying is absolutely true. You might be just slightly out. But because we're, we're coming from the face side, which is touching there, we're drilling the template that way. When we drill back, it's much more likely to be square and true. So that's a really good point. Um, and that's all there is to know about that, really.